America, and this is different ways to store water in emergency type situation. Different ideas, maybe some new tricks for you and everything else. But before we get going on that, I just want everybody to make sure that you turn into this coming Friday. I'm very excited, got a video coming out and it's on how to use your Marlar bags to save space in your preps, okay? There's a little teaser right there. That's the thumbnail you're gonna be wanting to look for. That video is coming out Friday morning at 6 a.m. So everybody tune in and watch that video because you're gonna get a lot of great information out of that video. I'm pretty excited about that one. It came out really, really good. I hope you all do enjoy that. So make sure you join me on Friday morning for that video. So let's get back to different ways to store our water and different ways that we can do this. All right, now we all know you can go to the store and you can buy a gallon of water. Now, these bad boys are very difficult to store. They take up a lot of room and everything else. And you have to sit here and figure out how you're going to store a lot of these. Now, the scientists and federal government and everybody else all do say that you need a gallon of water per day per person to make sure that you have water to drink, cook, and clean with. So... To store a lot of these things would be pretty difficult. One way that you could do it, if you really wanted to, is you could take and say if you had a closet or a corner in a spare room or something, and you could take and put, say, six or eight of these down, depending on how big your area is, well, then you could take and cut a piece of plywood, put over the top, and stack the exact same amount on top. Now, I wouldn't go any higher than just one layer because of the weight and the top of these things are really, really not really good to, to stack on, okay? Now, something else that you could do. We all know that you can go into Walmart and you can buy these bad boys. Oh, these nice big 40 packs of water. Now you get these bad boys for what, $3.98, all right? You get a 40 pack, okay? But you know what? I mean, these things are very heavy. So, for a lot of people, that would be pretty heavy to be moving around and stuff. Say you lived on a second or third floor and things of that nature. You know, say you're an older person or maybe you have, you know, you have issues with your arms and or your legs and things of that nature. Something like that is very heavy, but you could take and stack those in your closet, a spare room or something like that. I wouldn't stack them any more than four high. Because I found, I tried going five, and what happens is when you put that fifth one on the top, if you don't have them stacked like they do on the pallets in the stores, if you're just stacking them straight up like a tower, well, it crushes the bottom ones. But four works just fine. Because we all need H2O, right? Now, in a standard water bottle is a little over two cups of water. Now, we have to have water to survive, right? We need this H2O. We need H2O more than what we need food. Your body can go longer without food than it can water. So you got to make sure that you're really paying attention here, folks, because you need water to survive. It's just a give me. Now, there's some different things that you could do. Let's just move on to this. Let's talk about these jerry cans that you can go to Walmart and pick up. I'm sure that there's other stores that can, you can get these through. Um, you can get them on Amazon. I found Walmart was cheaper than Amazon, but you can order them on Amazon, have them delivered right to your home. Now, this is a seven gallon water jerry can. Now, it does have this little spout that's in here, which is kind of convenient in a sense. But you have to remember, you have to pick up seven gallons of water every time that you need something. And to pour it out of here and to get it into a bottle or something like that, you know, it can be pretty messy. It's pretty heavy and everything else. They are BPA free, but you're storing seven gallons of water in one shot, you know, and it's not a bad idea, is it? But wait, there's something better than this. So, you can go and pick up one of these bad boys at Walmart. Now, BPA free. Both of these cost roughly, when I pick mine up, around 15 bucks a piece. 
But the beauty of this one is this sets on a counter, a table, a log, whatever you have, and it has a spigot. So all you have to do is open the spigot, get your water. You can pour it into a standard water bottle very easy. You can fill up a pot. You can put it into whatever it is you want to do, and it's very easy and convenient for everyone in your family, from your kids to your grandparents to whoever it may be. Nobody has to pick this bad boy up and try to pour the water out of it like you do with this one. But here's the kicker. You use this one as a backup to this one. So when this one gets empty, you take and put your spout on here, take this little lid off here, and then you have just have to take and pour this back into here, and voila, you're right back in business again with a nice, easy spigot, folks. You wanna make things easy so nobody gets hurt trying to lug all this water because they do get heavy, all right? Water is the heaviest liquid. Now, you have to think about what happens if I have to leave? What happens if I have to go out and get water maybe, or maybe they turn the water back on, but they're not so sure, you know, they put out these water orders and everything, especially like during a hurricane and all this type of stuff. So you want to look into a filtration system. Now, the first one that's right, we're going to just knock right off here is the Berkeley fit, uh, filtration system. All right. And the only reason that I'm saying this is, is because they are very expensive. Yes, they are the best folks. They are the best ones that you can buy. They are very big. They take up a lot of room, all right? And they are expensive. Did I say that already? I think I did. They are very expensive. They start at $280. I have seen some online for as much as 400. Depends on the size you want and how many gallons did you want. Let's just go with something that's a little bit cheaper. Your Sawyer Water Mini Filtration System. All right, you can pick those up for 20 bucks. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them at Walmart. You can get them in a lot of different places. They will filter out 100,000 gallons, folks. And then if you want to turn around and you want to pick up their one-gallon gravity-fed system that you connect your Sawyer Water Mini System to, and then it's gravity fed, so you don't have to do anything, and you can fill up one of these, you can fill up one of these, whatever it is that you may do, all right? Now, there is another one out there that a lot of people have talked about, and I did purchase one, and I tried it out because I've seen a lot of bad reviews, and people talk very bad about these things. And the reason being is it's so hard to get the water through it, and that is the life straw. Now, yes, those are very cheap. You can pick them up for 15 bucks at Walmart, but they only filter out 1,000 gallons of water, which is not a very lot of water. If you think about it, where your Sawyer Mini will filter out 100,000 gallons. Do the math. So, the problem being with the Life Straw is it is so hard to get the water through it. Now, if you're one of these people that can suck a golf ball through a garden hose, well, that Life Straw is for you. But for the rest of us, well, don't even bother folks. Spend the extra five bucks. You will thank me for it and everything else. The life straws, they can be very, very difficult to use, especially if you are a older person. So you wanna go with the Sawyer Mini. Now, they have these kits that you can put into your bathtub. Yes, in the bathtub, folks. It goes right in there. It's called an Aquad pod kit 2.0 get them on amazon they're like 30 bucks now they'll hold between 65 and 100 gallons of water depending on the size of your tub now if you have a garden tub yes you can put more water in it you get closer to 100 gallons if you have a standard tub just like most of us do all right you're going to get about 65 gallons of water in there now they do have this nice spigot that comes right up and goes right over your faucet you can fill that thing up, you seal that off, you put the hose in, comes with the pump and everything, and then you can pump the water out of there, and you can pump it into one of these, you can pump it into one of these, a, a, a pot, a gallon, 
however you want to do it. But you'll have fresh water that was out of your spout, you know, depending on what town or city you live in, is if you trust your own city water or not. But the moral of the story is you have some fresh water and everything else to drink. Now, speaking of filtration, now if there is a type of situation where you are getting water from outside of your faucets, maybe it's a stream, lake, uh, whatever it may be. Maybe you live in the country, you have a stream or something like this. The power's out, you have no water, your well isn't working, and these type of things. You can use your Sawyer Mini and you can filter out your water and all that. But if you still don't feel safe, you want to make sure that you boil the water so you kill any bacteria, any viruses, anything in the water. You want to make sure you boil it. So you may want to make sure that you have if you are out in the elements and you're no longer in your home, you got to have something that's stainless steel, a pot or anything like that. But, you know, if you have a go bag, a backpack or anything like that, you want to get one of these little Stanley stainless steel cups. All right. You can put your water in here that you have filtered through your Sawyer Mini or whatever system that you may choose to use. All right. You bring that to a boil. It does come with two cups. Bring it to a boil and then you have nice clean, reliable drinking water. So another thing that you could do is, if you wanted to use a canteen type situation, thermal, whatever, it has to be a single wall unit, which means it's not a double wall like it's insulated or anything like that. Just a single wall stainless steel container. All right, now mine does have a rubber seal that goes around here. So, you cannot put this on here and put it over a fire. It'll melt your rubber seal. It'll no longer be any good, which will cause your canteen here, your little container, to leak. So you can make sure that you get this on the fire. Now, it doesn't have a big surface down here, so it could be kind of tricky, folks. So you want to make sure that you have some way, a small stove or get it right on the coals or something, bring it to a boil, let it cool, then you can put your lid back on it. And these are made, they come with a carabiner and the whole nine yards. These are made to hook to your go bag, your backpack, any of that type of stuff, your belt loop, anything. And this way here, you don't have to stand there and hold it and carry it. You can keep on moving to wherever your destination is. Now let's talk about another thing that you can also always remember that's in your home that always has lots of water in it and we are talking your hot water heater now did you know that your hot water heater will hold the hot water for at least two to four hours so you'll have the same temperature if you have it set at 120 degrees it'll hold that temperature for up to four hours if nobody has touched the faucet or anything else and it'll hold warm water you'll get warm water out of that faucet for up to four days depending on how much you use it. Now, what you have to do is, which I'm going to take you out and show you mine here in just a second, so everybody understands what I'm talking about. Every hot water tank has a drain at the bottom. So you may want to get yourself the smallest garden hose you can find, pick up a cheap one at Walmart and cut it down, depending on where your water heater is and how long you need it, because you don't need something that's like eight feet, 10 feet, 12 feet, you know, something that's long enough where you could put it into one of these or just a gallon jug or something like that. You know, I'm knocking everything over here, you know, but you can attach that to that, turn that on, and you're going to get warm or hot water out of there. Even if they turn the water off because there's no pressure to push the water out. So you have to attach it. It's always at the bottom. And I'm going to take you outside and show you that now. Okay, folks. So as you can see, this is my hot water tank. All right, it's a 60 gallon tank. All right, and that right there is a spigot. See, you can screw on a normal garden hose. Mine is, you need a, uh, a, a straight screwdriver to turn that, and then you can turn on this and then drain the water and everything out of there. Now, when you come up here, just in case nobody knows, if you look at the top, this is the water that's coming in. This is your cold water coming in from your either your well or your city water. And this is the hot water that's going out. So you can turn this off if you needed to, if something ever did happen. 
All right, so you just turn that off, just a quick little thing. Now, if you do have a gas water heater, mine is electric, same difference, you can still drain it from right down here. But the problem is, is yes, if you have a gas one, a lot of people are probably saying, well, and it can run if the power's out, if it's gas, and I still say I have natural gas. Well, it may not run, folks, because you have to check and make sure that the ignition isn't electric. Now, you may want to check with your owner's manual and everything else, uh, like mine is right on the side right here, okay? And if not, look up your model and find out. This way here you know, because if it is, um, it has an electric ignition, it won't work. And if you're not really sure on what to do and how you light it without the electric ignition, if you don't know what you're doing, you don't want to play around with it. So that's something that you may want to make sure that you understand and you know how to do before the emergency does arrive. So as you see, you know, depending on the size of your hot water tank, you have anywhere from a standard small type dorm room or a small apartment, you know, that starts at about 28, 30 gallons up to about 100 or more gallons, depending on the size of the home that you are in. Now mine is a 60 gallon tank. So that's 60 gallons of warm or hot water that I have at my disposal if I need it in an emergency type situation. And everybody has one. Now in some apartments, all right, you may share a hot water tank. So it may not be in your apartment, in which case you can't access it unless you know exactly where that could be and might be able to jimmy the door open to get to the water because they all have a drain on the bottom. But in your home, make sure that you know where it is. Make sure that you have what you need. Make sure you have a pair of pliers. Make sure you have a screwdriver or some way to make sure that you can turn that faucet on and off and you attach your hose and you have something to put that water into. Because at this point, water is like gold. Now, another thing that you could do, you can go to Walmart, you can pick these bad boys up right here. It's a solar heated camp shower. Now, I've talked about these before in some of my videos, but these things are excellent, all right? Now, I wouldn't use this for drinking or anything of this nature. I would use this for, well, just like the picture shows, you know, if you need a shower, maybe you need to you want to wash some clothes or something like that, you have to remember you're trying to conserve energy, whatever it may be that you're using, propane, maybe you're using butane, maybe it's firewood, whatever it is that you're trying to conserve because you don't know when you're going to get it again, but this all gets heated by the sun. It's a no-brainer, folks, and it even shows you in the back there's a little chart back here. don't know if you can see that or not. But there's a chart. It tells you how long it's going to take it to reach a certain temperature. And to reach 104 degrees is three hours in the sun, hanging in the sun. Five gallons of hot water so that you could take a shower, maybe do some laundry or whatever else. I have a couple of these this way here. I could just hang them on my fence out back after a hurricane if I needed hot water save the water water heater use this and i can wash dishes with this i can clean clothes and i can take a shower you could bring it inside it'll hang right up on top of shower head hang that sucker right up there and you can get yourself a hot shower or at least a warm shower it's better than an ice cold shower unless you live in the state of florida like i do where we just don't get that much cold water in the summertime folks you trust me water does not get cold down here in the summer it's very rare especially if you're on city water if you're on well water that uh, could be a different story but if you're on a city water system <laughs> it just doesn't get ice cold so i'm survival preparedness for beginners and this has been different ways to store water different ideas different things that you can do to be prepared for any type of situation you know if you're having a hurricane you get a warning if you don't you know, and if you live in an area with, say, like tornadoes and this type of things, maybe you have a storm shelter, you have a basement, any of these type of things, you want to make sure that these things 
once the season starts rolling in, you want to make sure that they're all full, ready to go with all your other type of supplies that are either in your storm shelter or in your basement. Because if a storm comes through the tornado and it takes everything above ground away, well, at least you have the stuff below ground to rely on. And that's where you should be storing all your goods. In a hurricane type situation, you have to make sure that you have stuff that you could take if you have to leave. And if you're hunkered down, well, make sure that you're keeping everything inside. Don't keep it in your garage. Make sure everything is inside the home where it's hopefully if you put up your storm shutters and everything and you're good to go and you're going to ride out the storm. Even if the power goes out, the water goes out. You know, there's just all these different things. And one quick thing that I want to throw out there to everybody. If you are so lucky to have maybe two bathtubs in your home, if you have a, you know, a second bathtub, well, I would use that one and just fill it up with water. No, don't put anything in it. Just fill it up with water. Make sure that you seal the drain off so it doesn't leak out. Because this way here, you could use that water to flush the toilet because if they turn off the water and everything else and as long as the sewer system is still operating and everything goes down you're in golden you just take a pot get yourself at least a gallon of water dump it in real quick and all the fun stuff that's in that toilet is should go right down and you just flush your toilet and avoid it a very bad smelly situation so I am Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I hope everybody enjoyed this video on different ways to store water and how you can do it and ways that you could stack it, you could uh, preserve it, you can clean it, you can filter it, you can get the bacteria out of it and everything else and the ball is all in your court. Make sure that you tune in on Friday for my exciting video that's coming out on how to use your Mylar bags to save space in your pantries and ways to store them. You're going to really like it. There's some great tips and tricks in there. And until next time, stay prepping, stay focused, keep thriving to survive. And I'll catch all of you on the flip side.